Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at the disposition of passive interest. What happens if you get rid of a business that's considered passive? You're getting rid of the shares. You're selling the business. This topic is covered in an income tax course, CPA exam regulation, as well as the enrolled agent exam. Now, if you don't know what a passive income is, then you, you should not be watching this. Go back and review the passive income, the at-risk limitation rules, and similar topics, which is they are part of this playlist. Now, as always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on a professional level through LinkedIn and personal level on Facebook. I also have a Facebook page. You want to make sure you subscribe to my YouTube. This is where I house all my lectures. So this way you're always up to date. Like my YouTube if you like them, share them, put them in playlists so others will benefit. I have a, link, a Twitter account and on my website you get access to courses organized by chapter. It's easier to access. This recording is brought to you by Jaeger CPA Review. Um, with, if you like this recording, you can view hundreds of hours of video lectures similar to this one, thousands of multiple choice questions with solution, with detailed solution to be more specific. So if you're a CPA student or if you're an accounting student, this is a great supplemental tool. Simulations, which is exercises with solutions, textbook, physical textbook, including for the CPA exam, audio lectures for retention purposes, electronic flashcards, plus others. If you happen to use Jaeger CPA Review, use the PMF code, you'll get 10% off of the best value course. You will benefit yourself and benefit this channel. So the first thing I'm going to go over is the general rules for the disposition of passive interest, which we talked about a little bit briefly. We touched upon in a prior session. Simply put, if a taxpayer disposes of the entire interest in a passive activity, any suspended losses, and in some circumstances, credit may be used when computing the final accounting gain or loss on the investment. So simply put, once you get rid of the business, any suspended losses, you can use them. And any suspended credit, you can use them. Now, remember the credit. If you cannot use all the credits, they will be lost. However, if you cannot use all the losses, okay, they can offset other type of income. So losses, the suspended losses, they survive. They survive your business. Okay, they can be used. But the credits, they don't survive your business. This is assuming you sold the business in quote unquote the normal scheme of things, which is sell your business, selling your business. What happened if you dispose your business in a non fully taxable transaction? What are we talking about here? We're talking in case of that. We're talking if you gave this business by gift or if you sell it using installment sale. So those are the three situations where we have to look at the rules at how this works. Now, this topic, mo a lot of teachers don't cover, so you may not be covered this topic, but I suggest you view it because it's going to maybe help you kind of prepare for future topics, which is to talk about the basis, okay, step up basis, transfer of basis, so on and so forth. So let's start with the first scenario, disposition at death. So what happened when you pass away and you do have uh, suspended losses, okay, in a passive activity interest. Suspended loss deductible on the decedent's final return to the extent of excess over any step-up basis. In other words, you may or may not use those losses. In other words, if they're going to help you have a step-up basis, they will be used. Otherwise, they will not. Now, what is a step-up basis? This is basically we're talking about a topic we're going to be covering later on, but hopefully I can just give you an idea what it is. Let's work an example. Allison dies with a passive activity property having an adjusted basis of 40000 Suspended losses of 10000 and a fair market value at the date of death is seventy-five. Now, we have to know a few rules here. For one thing is the uh, what's going to happen is since the date of death, the value of the property is 75000 So we're going to be assuming they're going to be using the value of the property. So the basis of the property, it's going to be 75000 Okay. Now, what does that mean? It means that the increase, the step up in basis is 35000 Remember, the basis is forty, But since the value is 75, we have a step up of basis of 35000 Okay. What does that mean? It means really the 10000 could have been used to add it to the basis which is if we take the 10,000, add it to the 40, it's going to bring up, up to 50. But since the fair market value is way above 50, therefore, we don't, basically, we don't use the losses. What happens is that because the fair market value is large enough, which is large enough above 50,000 in our situation, basically, none of the 10,000 is used up. Let's put it this way. Now, let's change the scenario and assume that the fair market value at the date of death was only 47. 
Notice the, the fair value is only 7,000 more than the basis. Then what's going to happen, we are going to use 3,000 from the suspended losses to bring the basis up to 50. So simply put, here we are using some of the basis. Okay, some of the basis, which is how much are we using? We're using, of the 10,000, we're using 3,000. But technically what's going to happen is, we have to use the 10,000, whether it's a market appreciation or step up basis. So basically what we do is we have a step up basis. Okay. Now the, uh, let's see, assume the same fact, except that the property fair value is 47 because the setup basis only 7,000, the suspended losses allowed are limited to 3,000. Okay. The loss, the 3,000 loss available to Allison is reported on her final income tax return. So hopefully we understand what does it mean may or may not be used if the fair market value is higher and here we are making also an assumption that we are using the fair market value at the date of death which is that may or may not be the situation we'll see later on in 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 future chapters when we talk about uh, estate taxes disposition by gift what happened any suspended losses increase the donee's basis of the property the donee is the person that's receiving the property so if there's any suspended losses, they're going to increase their basis. Simply put, the donor does not get any benefit. Now, what happens when you increase your basis? What happens when you increase your basis? If you have any suspended losses and they increase your basis, two, two things could happen. When you sell the property, you're going to have less gain or you're going to have more losses. So it's going to help you. It's not going to help you now. It's going to help you later. Okay. So you're going to have increase in property basis, which is you're going to have a greater depreciation. Okay. Or what's going to happen is you're going to either have less gain when you sell it or more losses. Okay. Which is, which is good. Less gain is good. More losses is good. And depreciation is good. So let's take a look at, so again, it's going to increase the basis of the person that's receiving the property. Carlton makes a gift to Emma of passive activity property, having an adjusted basis of 40,000 suspended losses worth in and a fair market value at the date of the gift is 100,000. Carlin, Carlton cannot deduct the suspended losses in the year of disposition. However, the suspended losses transfer with the property and are added to the adjusted basis of the property. Now, again, later on, we'll talk about when there's a gift, what, what basis do we use? But for now, assume we're going to be using the basis of 40,000. So the basis of 40,000, what's going to happen, we add the suspended losses. Now the basis to the donee, to the person who received the gift is 50,000, which is good to the donee. Okay. They're going to have more depreciation or if they sold it, they're going to have less gain or if they sold it at a gain, if they have a loss, they'll have more losses. Assuming Emma is able to sell the property for 105 soon after she receives the gift, her taxable income will be 55,000. Okay. Because why? Because the basis is 50 sold it for 105 consideration received minus the basis will give her uh, a 55,000. So the losses were help Emma reduce her I'm not, yeah, help Emma reduce her taxable income by 10,000. Okay, let's now take a look at disposition by installment sale. And hopefully we all know what installment sale. Installment sale is when you sell a property and you receive payments rather than one payment all at once. So what's going to happen is this. Portion of the suspended losses deductible is the same as the percentage of total gain recognized in the year. So we have to know what is our gain recognized in the year. Whatever that gain is, the portion of that gain, we will deduct a proportion, the same proportion for the losses. And the best way to illustrate this is to actually work an example. Lucas sells his entire interest in a passive activity for 100,000. His adjusted basis in the property was 60,000. So sold the property for 100,000, adjusted basis of 60,000. We have a profit of 40,000. It means we have a profit of a 40% gross profit. So the gross profit is 40%, which is 40,000 divided by 100,000. If Lucas received $20,000 payment, $20,000 payment, your gross profit is 20%. It means you are going to be recognizing, I'm sorry, the gross profit is 40%. You're going to be recognizing a gain of 8,000. This is the gain. Okay, the gain of 8,000. Now, so we need to know the gain because the gain, it's going to determine how much losses are we going to take. If the activity has a suspended losses of 25,000, so we have a total of 25,000. So how much can Lucas deduct from that loss that year? Well, what we do is we take the gain. This is the $8,000 gain for this year divided by the total gain. The total gain is 40,000 on the deal. 
and basically this is this ratio is 20% times times the $25,000 total losses so for that year 20% of 25,000 is 5,000 so we can recognize 5,000 of the 25,000 in losses Okay. And this pattern will continue as Lucas receive installment payment. For example, if Lucas receive $10,000 payment, if Lucas receive a $10,000 payment, the profit on this payment is $4,000. This is the gain. Now, how much losses can we take? We're going to take the $4,000 divided by the total gain of $40,000. For, for this payment, we have a 10% gain. We're going to take the 10%, multiply it by the $25,000, and which is going to give us 2,500 of suspended losses. So your, your suspended losses are recognized in proportion as you recognize the gain, proportionally to the gain recognized. Okay? And the gain is determined by the gross profit percentage, which is happens to be 40%. If you have any questions, any comments about this topic, please email me. If you're studying for your CPA exam, study hard. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating. Good luck and stay motivated.